Hello and welcome to what is a little bit of a different upload from me. Today I'm going to discuss what we can do with Lockie Jones. Now this one has definitely thrown a massive spanner in the works and it's affected mine and probably majority of the comps trading plans for round six. Now what we can do with Jones this week is, well solution one, hold Jordan Clark. If you're like me and you owned Clark, I had plans to trade him to Jones and then I was going to flip Brockman to Impey that's not the case. It hasn't eventuated that way. So Clark plays the first game of the Saturday against West Coast. He plays at about 1.45 p.m. So if the teams come out maybe tonight or tomorrow, we might have a little bit of a read on whether or not we can hold him or trade him. If he's named, I plan on holding him just for the time being to fill in the void that could result in a donut in the back line, and I do not want that one bit. So, yeah, it doesn't seem logical. He was dropped last week, but not completely. It's almost like Chris Scott thought, no, nah, we're going to drop this bloke from the side, but then he turned out to be a medical sub, which affected plenty of, plenty of blokes' loopholes. And, yeah, that wasn't really... Was this one of those situations? What do you do? So I think Clark returns this week. Personally, I wouldn't be surprised if he made an appearance in that Geelong side this Saturday. We're going to have to wait and see. Now, I'm not 100% sure when the teams are going to come out just because of the longer turnaround. We're so used to having football lockout on Thursday. That's not the case. So what does that mean for our team announcements? I'm not 100% sure. So my plans for that are to wait uh, until I do anything until Saturday morning. So luckily I'm not trading in any Giants or Dogs players this week or out for that matter. So I can hold off on my trading until Saturday morning and assess the situation from there. So yeah, I don't mind holding Jordan Clark. It just depends what your structure is. Now, solution two, trading Ryan Mansell. Now this was a rookie that I was very skeptical on. I discussed him a couple of weeks ago after his first game. Um, didn't didn't talk about him this week. Didn't think he was all that relevant, but now he really is because Jones is out. We need someone to fill in that gap, but who exactly? Now, Mansell is 102K. He scored 50-odd. Now, if you bring him into your side, he's going to make cash just like that. Just needs to play, and that is the big question. Uh, similarities to Jordan Clark plays on the Saturday, but he plays Saturday night against the Ds. Now, will he play? I don't know. That's why I'm going to hold off. If he is playing, I think I do trade uh, Ryan Mansell into my side. I'm not confident about it, though, because as soon as Watson comes back in the team, he's going to be the first bloke out, and I hate his job security of a passion. It is just about as dodgy as it gets. So um, it just really depends on the two of them. Uh, they're probably my two favourite options at this point in time. Um, so, yeah, if Clark's named... Uh, I'd probably hold him personally and just hold off trades for one week. And if Mansell's named, uh, I'd probably go Mansell. But if they're both named, we just have to wait and see how we go. But um, my advice for this would to not trade or lock anything in until Saturday morning. It depends if you have plans to trade in McRae or or Bonapalli or someone that's in reasonable form that's playing Friday night that is a bit of a different situation. You might be able to hold off that until next week. So, yeah, advice for that is don't trade until Saturday morning until we have a little bit of a better read on what to do with our side. Now, solution three, trading Zach Reed. Do I like this solution? Absolutely not. I'm not a big fan of Reed. Um, I like him as a player. He's, he's a great player, but not a super coach friendly role. He's a lockdown defender, and his game against Brisbane, I thought, was very panicky. He gave away a couple of goals. I saw it right there and then, uh, which resulted in a soccer goal, uh, one that he could have just rushed through. And, yeah, I don't think he's AFL ready as of yet. And, yeah, in terms of his role, you probably compare him a little bit to a Jeremy McGovern or Harris Andrews type player, lockdown defender. Going to be a gun, I think. And, or... Here's one, Fisher Mackesy, one of those sort of, yeah, real key defenders. Going to be a good player, but not going to get the points. Unfortunately, he's 166K, so he's priced rather awkwardly for a rookie. Now, I think his job security is actually not too bad. I think he plays for at least two or three weeks. It all depends with 
what they want to do with him and Ridley. Um, I definitely think he's going to play Anzac Day because Riddles is out for that week. Whether or not he's on the chopping block uh, next week, I'm not sure. It just depends how he plays. So, look, I would avoid Zach Reed, but I just thought he was worth discussing. Now, the last solution I've got here, uh, solution four, that is use your DPP swing. Now, in my case, I cannot do that because I have Laird and Clark in the back line as it is. And that does struggle um, a little bit for me. So if you have Laird in the midfield or and Clark in defence or vice versa, what you can do, it's kind of obvious, but um, flip, flip them both in defence. You do lose your DPP for the time being. If you have Fife, you can have him in the midfield. That's exactly what I've done. And there'll be a vacancy in your midfield, whether or not you want to go early on Finlay and McRae. I think you can. There are some very nice options in the forward line. I did discuss in my rookie review this week. You can go check that out. I'll leave the link in the description for that. Uh, you got Jai Farrar and R2 Bosnvalaki, who, look, they do look like really good options, but that's not really the point. We need to fend the rookies, and we're not getting them. So, yeah, my take on that is to just hold off until Saturday morning and assess it from there. I know it's quite daunting. I woke up with a little bit of a fright. I checked my phone, first thing I read was recommended tweet from Kane Corns, Lockie Jones is out for ankle injury, going to be in surgery in 48 hours, and he's going to miss four weeks. And yeah, I was, yeah, I was rattled at that point. I didn't know what the hell to do, so I thought I'd make a little bit of a video on it just to discuss what we can do. If you guys have any other suggestions, just drop them down in the comments, and yeah, I wouldn't mind a little bit of uh, debate and, and advice on what you guys reckon, because... There's only so much advice I can give, and and yeah, I'm not even going to lie. Even I don't know what I'm going to do at this point in time, but it'd be nice to get a little bit of feedback in the comments and and see how we go at that one. But yeah, don't panic, guys. We'll wait and see for Saturday morning, and I'm sure it'll we'll work it out. It'll we'll work itself out. Another thing is, we can hope that High will get to gig. Oh, it's such a a risky one because he plays the last game on Sunday. I'm pretty sure. So he's He's, we're not going to know whether or not he's named until like Saturday night. And it'll be yeah, too little too late at that point. So we can't rely on that. Just have him as, a, as an emergency. And if you have really just have him on the bench kind of thing. So, yeah, that's just about it for me, guys. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys reckon of the video. And, yep, we'll see you guys in the next one.